and welcome to another edition of Felix Day Matters. And as, as you always, this is live, and I'm joined today by John Goodwin. Good morning, John, how are good you? Good morning, Sarah. I'm good, thank you. It's been quite brunastery this morning, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, I just walked along the pond from Langer Park, and uh, very blustery. Fortunately. So you were blown down. Fortunately, here. I brought a comb, so that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so with the, the cold weather starting to set in, there is talk of snow arriving soon, isn't there? And we have been blessed with some lovely weather right up until now, and we're only now going into December and, and the weather is getting colder. So um, to try and minimise the problems that we had last year, and obviously at the beginning of this year with snow and gritting and things, um, what's the County Council doing about it? Um, well, we, we have our, there are A road, A routes are, are gritted as a matter of course, night and morning, they, they get details of what the weather is expected, so they're done anyway. Not the trunk roads, trunk roads are responsibility of the highways agency, mm -hmm. but the A, the A roads and the B roads are done anyway. Um, there's, a, there's a route they go, we can put in requests that different areas are done as a priority. Mm -hmm. um, as for instance, last year I managed to get outside the hospital done because it's actually like a skating rink um, so you, we get them to add different bits to their, to their yeah. areas so it, it's an ongoing thing and there's a pattern and if you look on the website it tells you exactly where the gritters will go. This is a site called Elgin isn't there, That's there's something the you can get Elgin and we'll put the details of the website on the credits later on. Elgin also shows all the road works throughout the whole of the country so mm -hmm. if, if you want to see if there's a footpath dug up in, in Aberdeen then that will you tell you have a look. Yes. Oh wow, I didn't realise it was quite that. You have to be sad to do it, but it's all there. <laughs> so, um, there are priorities, like you said, all the A and B roads, and I've got all the statistics here from, from the County Council website. So priority one is obviously the A and B roads, um, busiest bus and commuter routes. Now, Felix, though, struggled, didn't it, this time round, because the bus routes, they take such a convoluted, twisted, turning route through yeah. Felix, yeah. though. Um, there was difficulty in keeping the roads clear, wasn't there? And they had, there was subsequently complaints. There was, but again, well, not again, but as local members, uh, that's Graham Newman, Nick Barber, and myself, we can have an input into this. So, mm -hmm. so if somebody complains to us, then we can speak to the gridding teams and ask them to make sure that they treat these, if you like, as a second priority. Because obviously yeah. the A roads are the priority. Because really, then you're going to priority two, aren't you? Which is obviously the side roads off Felixstowe yeah. are yes. not actually a priority, even though buses use that. It's an un it's unusual, isn't it? It seems a bit bizarre. Well, you can't be everywhere at once. No, it's, it's a bit. <laughs> you know, yeah. We'd all like to be in two places at the same time, but you just can't do it. So the the gridders, you know, have to do the main roads first. I mean, yeah. that, that's uh, I think a given. So priority two are other significant bus routes, other commuter routes, um, and that's treated if snow or ice is forecast to persist for much of the day, um, or shorter term conditions will serve, e.g. rain turning to ice. So there must be, it's, it's a really close call, isn't it? Do you go out and grit? Because obviously last time round we had the problem of the snow was melting, then it was refreezing, and then there was more yeah. snow falling on top of it. I so it was compacting itself down. I think how it works is they do the A roads, the priorities, as a matter of course. So if yeah. they think it's going to be frosty, they think it's going to snow, they do them. The, the lesser roads, they're not done unless it actually happens. So then mm. if we get snow on the ground, etc., then they are snow plowed or, or gritted once the A roads A routes have, a been, routes done. have been done. Because priority three are other classified roads, busier, unclassified roads, and they're only treated in prolonged severe conditions as resources permit. Because obviously that's the other thing, resources, we don't have a, a, a never-ending no. supply of salt. No, um, priority four are the remaining surfaced unclassified roads and they're treated in conditions of severe and prolonged snow yeah. as, again, resources permit. I have to say the teams, they do work night and day when they're yeah. home. They, they really are, you know, they, they do go the extra mile. We, we hear all sorts of dubious comments about council workers, but those gridding teams and, and the staff that run them, they are exemplary. Mm. And, and last year we were getting updates twice a day on what was happening, what was likely to happen. So, you know... I, I where can the, um, if obviously the public, they can go on Elgin and see where obviously the routes are going to be cleared. Um, can, the, can the public actually contact the gritting teams or do they go through the council and then that gets put through? It, if there is, for instance, a road that should have been cleared and hasn't been. You can do that, but to be honest with you, the easiest way is to contact your local member. Yeah. Um, Nick and Graham look after what's known as Felixstowe Coastal Division. I look after Felixstowe North and the Trinity Villages, and um, we're probably the best point of contact because we can get straight into the mm -hmm. to the head of the team, if you like. Yeah. Which makes life. Um, and I have a bypass as a central control system. Yeah. 
because I mean this is a thing in in our area Felixstowe has only got a few roads in and a few roads out so obviously when you were actually in the town <laughs> you're stuck you're stuck stay in Felixstowe stay and spend Felix money stay, <laughs> and spend yes because they spend money because um, obviously the, I live in Curtin so I live in, the, in a village and um, we really had to fight to have some of the roads cleared repeatedly because they came through gritted and then kind of left us and we do now have a bus that runs through there so it, it's technically a bus route um, but somebody came and reviewed the situation and said well actually we don't need to clear this all the time and it took a long time for them to actually come back and say actually yeah we really ought to clear this road because the bus was actually skidding I mean, <laughs> proper it, drifting around the, around the roads in Curtin Suffolk is a big place and mm. trying to get everywhere covered is just not possible so you, you do have to prioritise yeah. and uh, of course there's all of local members all having a little whinge at the, at the controller saying, can you please come and do this and mm. the other? And pretty much they do. Um, one of the other areas which you may be interested in is, is going to be done regularly now is through Nacton and Leamington because if Operation Stack is that, yeah. Full, yeah. then they need to be able to get in, in and out of the villages and that will now be done as a, as a priority. As a priority. Of course, yeah. Because those, those two parishes are really, really good, you know. Mm. They may not like Operation Stack, but they do accept it, and you know, as I say, they're extremely uh, pragmatic about it all. And it helps. I mean, we did actually end up having um, some very clear roads in Curtin, clearer than Felix Stone, <laughs> because it brings on to grit bins. Yes. Now, um, if you do live in a rural area or even in the town, because I found that when I came into Felix Stone, um, and I was wandering around doing shopping still and everything, because you can't grind to a halt in the snow. Um, the roads, the side roads off the main areas were absolutely jammed of snow. Mm. You come into Curtin, I'm not bragging or anything, not really much around. We all stopped cleared. doing Curtin. <laughs> not my area. So because we had um, obviously grip bins. Now, how do people manage these? How do they manage the grip bins that you right, see? The around? easiest thing to do is you can either get your parish council, which is the parish mm -hmm. council in Phillystow, Phillystow Town Council, I know that's a yeah. bit of a weird thing. Um, parish councils can apply for them. Um, county councils, we've got locality money, so we can pay for them if, if there's a if there's a justifiable need, and the council will keep them topped up. Obviously, the plea is don't go digging two or three bucket fours to do your part at home because that doesn't quite add to the spirit mm. of them. But the idea is that grip bins are put on on junctions and hills, etc., where, where the the grippers are perhaps not liable to go. And a public spirited person can have a high vis coat and a shovel and just chuck some grit about, and that, that's how it goes. Last year, when Hamilton Road was so bad, I offered to pay for grit bins to go to various locations mm -hmm. down Hamilton Road, and then you know to see if one of the shopkeepers, one or two of the shopkeepers, would just chuck some of that. This was all systems go, and then somebody suddenly said, "Well, it's not our job to do it," which is very, very true. It mm -hmm. isn't, but it would get it done. Then we had the gritters go through, which was fine, and then one of the shopkeepers said, that grit is staying my carpet, so you just cannot win. No. You know, and when, whatever you do, you're, you're, well, you're cursed if you do and cursed if you don't. Because it was extremely slippery it in was, some parts of Phoenix Town. I mean, um, if you, you know, as I say, the road was gritted through, and then of course it all gets carted in on people's feet. Mm. And, uh, you know, <laughs> what do you do to be There's right? There's always well, one, isn't can't. there? <laughs> There's you always one. Do. Um, so, obviously, the grip bins, how often are they replenish them? Do they come round on a regular basis? Just make a call to the council and say they said to grip them, they'll get filled up. And will they be topping them up beforehand, or do they oh, have yeah, to be requested? Oh, yeah, they're all full at the start, of, but you just, you know, you have to get them in place. So I've personally paid for some um, in the two billion, the two trimmies with my locality money. Mm -hmm. and, um, I would imagine the parish club just rings up, but they are all full before the winter starts. They're all full before yeah. the winter starts. Now we, we did touch on the snow clearing, and I'm going to read this because this is off the official site. If you want to clear snow and ice off the pavement outside your property or from public spaces, it is very unlikely that you'll be sued or held legally responsible for any injuries on the path if you've cleared it properly. Right. Now. There is this controversy surrounding this now because we do live in a society where people are so quick to turn around and say, oh, you fall over that, I'm going to sue the council, or I'll fall over that, I'm going to sue you. Um, clearing it properly. Now, I was getting increasingly fed up <laughs> because I helped deliver some flyers last year and people had cleared their driveways and they'd stacked the snow either side of the drive on the pavement, which then meant you had to go onto the road to walk around the heaps of snow. 
Um, who pleases? Can, can, is there anyone that can go around and say that's not allowed? Be I would sensible. imagine not. To be no. brutally honest with you, you would hope. Surely you would hope that people wouldn't be so stupid. Um, I'm not saying that I'm a saint because I'm not, but outside of ours, we've got a wide path, mm. and I clear half and leave the other half snow. So I think that if anybody wants to walk on a bit, I've cleared they can. And yeah. But I mean, it's so absolutely crazy that you you know you'll think, well, we mustn't clear at all because you know this this stupid myth about people being sued. I personally have never heard of anybody being sued for clearing snow. No. And I can't believe it would because surely if you sued somebody who cleared their heart, you'd be pilloried as an idiot. Yes. <laughs> you know, we're, we talk about the big society where people help themselves and help each other. And surely clearing snow from your, from your um, pathway inside your home is pretty, you know, pretty much in line it with was the good. whole idea. But just move it out of the way. Don't put it, <laughs> Don't put it actually back I on the pavement. I'm a white man today, so I suppose I'm no big <coughs> generation. But I just think somebody of the older generation comes along and slows on ice outside your house because you've been too old to clear it or haven't had the time. Then I mm. think that's, you know. There is a snow code. There is a way of clearing it. And you can go onto the county council website and there is a, a, it opens up another page where it does actually explain to people how to clear the snow off their driveways and pavements outside their houses properly. So that, that's... That would be the nanny state at work. That's exactly... I mean, if you get it out of the way, it's clear. <laughs> it's cleared. I mean, I chuck the snow that I clear from the park out front of us back onto our garden. Yeah. And in the same good time it goes. I mean, I, it just seems barking mad. You have to have instructions on how to sweep snow. But it's probably just to try and guard against some, some, some bit of litigation. Yep, I reckon it is. So go and have a look at it if you are a bit unsure as to how to clear snow properly. I have um, to tell you I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to. Sorry, sorry. We actually, yeah, there was a lovely, um, I have to do, I, I commend the people in, in, a, in the village because we did go out in high vis jackets with spades. The yeah. farmers helped as well. Yeah. Everybody mucked in and the roads were clear. And it was great. But do keep bringing the gritter through on the main on the main road. We need the gritter, but all the little side roads and stuff we managed to clear them ourselves. Good exercise. And also the um, four by four element of this Suffolk Indeed. Suffolk four by four, um, the Rover Rescue Team. They were out in force, yeah. and um, not many people know about them. They were on the news the other day, which I thought was fantastic. Um, they're a team of people who own four by four vehicles, so they're not necessarily Land Rovers, and they, they draw. Shouldn't, hmm? shouldn't have a four by four. It's not a Land Rover. Exactly, I have to agree on that one. Um, but they they um, drive nurses, doctors, yeah. emergency services. Um, they take meals on wheels round. They also, um, in certain parts of, because this is right across the county and also into Norfolk yeah. and Essex as well, so it's not just a Suffolk thing. Um, there's a few of them that will do shopping runs for elderly who can't get out. Um, so there are people around and they're easy to get in touch with as well. But there was a thing about how they're going to be training certain nurses in the area that go around and, and um, give care to people in their homes on how to drive a 4 by 4 in the snow. So then there's an even wider group of people coming around and, and helping out. And I think that in itself is a is a hidden gem, I believe, in, in our yeah, area. I, I mean, there was a lovely story last year of a lady, farmer's wife, who um, she worked in the maternity unit, and he took her all the way to hospital in his tractor. Mm. I mean, you know, people do this sort of thing. Sometimes it hits the news, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you live next door to an elderly person who's infirm, how hard is it to go and knock on the door and say, can I get you any mm. shops? I mean, it's just those simple simple little things that we never hear of, but that happen all the while, and should happen all the while. I think, you know, it's, we should try and look after people who are perhaps not as healthy as the rest of them. No. Well, I've, I've got friends who are in, in the road rescue, and they were saying that they actually, they love doing it. They oh, absolutely, absolutely love doing it. And a friend of mine who was, was driving a, a nurse around, um, for about the best part of a couple of weeks, mm. so she could take all the medication around, and he said it was absolutely brilliant. Big boys and their toys. Big boys and their toys doing a valuable community, absolutely. big society. Yes, That's yes. it. It's all about big society. We love um, our land drivers. <laughs> you still haven't come out in hours though. Um, pavements and cycle tracks. Obviously, this is another thing. People encouraging to get out yes. and and use bikes and obviously their stuff like that. They are classed as priorities, as, again. Um, priority one, obviously, is main shopping streets and town centres. This is for pavements and cycle tracks. Um, priority two, other town centre pavements and important cycle tracks. Priority three, pavements and important cycle tracks. And then, of course, priority four is residential areas. 
So the cycle route that comes down the high road, yes. when it goes onto the pavement, because it does actually come up off the road onto the pavement, are those sections of the pavement cleared as a priority or not? I don't think they are. So they just focus just on the... Basically, on I think you, you just got to use your good common sense when, yeah. when, when things are like that. I mean, they, the roads have got to take priority because of buses and traffic and people cycling. I mean, I ride a motorbike, but I'm sure it's heck not going to ride in the snow. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> or I hope not to be out, be caught out. But if I ride in the snow, it'll be because I'm caught out on it, not because I'm yeah. foolishly struck out, you know. Mm -hmm. so that, that, that's and that's another thing. Obviously, during wintry weather conditions, when you're driving and also so it's, it's looking after the car as well you do often see people sat by the side of the road you need to ask yourself is your journey essential because again is it is it essential not just knock on the neighbor's door and say i'm going into town save you going in yeah. get a few Can people get shopping yeah. exactly so that then minimizes the amount of people at risk um check the weather forecast obviously um, listen to local and national radio for travel information. Tell somebody where you're going as well. I think local media is fantastic. Yes. That, because you know um, you can get an instant update, and that you know they are there and, and they know. And, and, and I think that is, if ever there's a time to to listen or watch your local media, then when weather conditions. Right. Mm. Can I just say one, yep. my, my one little great one on winter driving? And I was talking to Mike, the cameraman, about this before we started. I really think that people should be prosecuted if they haven't got their windows and mirrors properly cleaned before they strike off. So often you see somebody squirt, squirt, can of de-icer, a six inch gap in the way they go, I mean they cannot see. They no. can't see what's coming from the side, behind, etc, etc. Um, I mean, I think in Germany, if your windows aren't totally clear before you leave, you know, you can expect a ticket. And it's I a think snow on a the roof as well, isn't it? Snow on the roof of a vehicle. Yeah. It's good fun if though you when you're braking all slow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As I was saying, you, see, you were seeing people driving around with masses and masses yeah. of snow on top of the of the thing, and yeah. I had to chuckle. We we were driving down to Duxbury roundabout. And this this woman came past us, and she had a mountain of snow. She yeah. braked in the whole lot, and then she was like this because she couldn't see where she was going. In a you're previous right. life, when I was a lorry driver, we used to pick up the. Um, continental trailers from the port and the idea was to drive gently until you got to the police gate and then slam the brakes on and all the snow, ice and water would cascade off and semi-drain the policeman. <laughs> <laughs> they soon learned it was great fun if you could get one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's extremely sneaky and I was younger then. <laughs> um, adjust your drive and obviously learn how to drive in the snow exactly. prior to actually yeah. going out in it. Um, hail, it's gentle ice, gentle yep. acceleration, gentle brakes, gentle second gear all the way. Uh, headlights, if it's not foggy on your side of the road, turn them off. Because yeah. the amount of times you come past somebody with fog lights on, and you always think, is it foggy on your side of the road? It dazzles because it will reflect off off the off the snow and actually dazzle the person. I take your top over here, fog lights, are you? Front ones as well. Yeah. When people have obviously them all on, you don't need them. Doesn't make it any easier to see you. Um, only in the fog it does. Dazzle from winter sun. Yes, very very. Uh, yes. Funny, I've gone back to my my old boy's toys um, motorcycle. Really really difficult in winter sun because it's low right in your face. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep sunglasses in the car. It doesn't actually hurt to wear them in the winter. It doesn't have to just be for sun. And the other thing is make sure your vehicle has got all the oil, all the anti freeze. <laughs> Water levels topped up, your, your tyres are at the right pressure as well, because quite often if you're tired, if your steering is feeling heavy, go around and check your tyre pressure and everything, and, and basically drive sensibly. That is, that is the key, so just drive sensibly, you know, you, you cannot go screaming around the corner like a, you know, like a racing you driver, still you see just them. have to go gently with everything. And that leads us nicely into parking, ah, <laughs> because the last, parking. <laughs> the dreaded parking issue, um, I have to admit, when I when it's snowing, we came in to pick up a load of medication for uh, a friend of my friend's family, and um, we parked outside, you know, where he was the jewellers, the, the, the surgery yeah. there, and I had to get out and push the car out, because <laughs> we got completely stuck in there. Being um, slightly flippant, if you have bad weather, then everybody's garden looks the same, and all the yellow lines are white. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, not the, that's not the way we should consider it. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, you've been part of the people who are doing a parking review at the moment, yes. aren't you? Yeah. And I'm not going to ask you too many questions because I think 
just explain right. in simple okay. terms what's going on with the parking in Felixstowe. Well, the, the parking in Felixstowe main is, is totally abused, as you know, at the moment. There is a parking review done by the county, being done by the county council because we are the high rise authority, and it's got the full backing of the district council, which is rather nice. And a lot of the, the yellow lines and double yellow lines will go in the very near future. This should have been done in conjunction with the shared space scheme, but for some reason it wasn't. But I think, don't, I think the figure of space is going to be freed up for somewhere in about the 200 bucket, so there'll be a lot more free spaces in the tank, mm -hmm. which is good, because if you don't need a double yellow or a single yellow, don't have them. Where you need them, have them. And the, the plea that we're making, and, the, and there's now become a, a safe and able team, police safe and able team priority, is that people who park on double yellow lines, people who park on zigzags outside of schools, we have asked that they are issued with a ticket, not a warning, not a police on park here again, and the, the offender thinks, ha ha, they won't be here tomorrow, so I'm okay. Just slap tickets on them, because if people know they're going to get the ticket, then they'll stop parking. Mm -hmm. If you go anywhere near Tesco's of an evening, there are park cars parked on all the double yellow lines, even on the curtsy crossings people park, and it just, it's, it's a selfish, you know, it shouldn't happen really. Because there are car parking spaces, free ones. There now are. some people have argued that the car parking spaces that are free in the library car park, there's not enough of them and there's not long enough. Um, I think the amount of, because the district council, like everybody else, needs revenue. So um, I think that it's good that they've given some free car parking spaces in both Crescent Road and Randall Road car mm -hmm. park. So I think that is a, is a gesture they needn't have given, but they have. The other thing is that the car parking in Felixstowe is a real bargain compared to Ipswich. If mm -hmm. you go to Ipswich, you think, how much? I mean, it's just horrendous. So I, I think on the, on the car parks, that was there. Um, and I've, I've I really think if people think it's too far to walk from those car parks, all they've got to do is just time themselves how long it takes to walk from Randler Road, Crescent Road, into the middle of town. Yeah. And I've done it, Angel and I have done it, and it's two and a half minutes. And yeah. She suffers from asthma, and I'm not young, and uh, you know we don't sprint. And uh, I would, it's, it's worth timing because it, it isn't that long to do. No. I mean, with also with um, the free parking that is available in the town, um, if you are able to walk from Solar, you can park in Solar for up to two hours Indeed, free. Yeah. Um, and it also gives that end of the town a reason to go to as well, because there are shops that are up the yeah, other end of the high street, which have got lovely things available. Um, so parking in Solar, I do it quite regularly, park up in Solar, walk all the way down through the town. I think so, the factory shop has been a great help for that end of town because mm -hmm. people love a bargain and uh, I'm led to believe there are lots of bargains to be had in this. Yeah. So that draws people up there to Solar and, and to the other shops. Um, and we have, at the moment, I think we're extremely lucky in the town because most of the shops are occupied. Yeah. Um, there's always rumours of who's going to be the next one to move out. Um, I know for a fact that some people are moving out. Yeah. But, um, at the moment, we've got a vibrant town centre, and we really need to use it. I mean, you, you can get. I was, a friend of mine uh, runs a fashion shop. Mm -hmm. and he said uh, somebody came in and said, "Oh, I hear you're you're going." And he said, "Well, that's strange. I ordered all the next year's stuff yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he told me about a couple of months ago." Yeah. And he was absolutely flabbergasted. So, where yeah. you're going? You know. So, which well, I had ordered my stock now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually um, are, like you said, very lucky in the town, and I do get quite angry sometimes with parking. Um, when you are trying to walk through the town, when you're walking down the side roads, um, particularly Highfield Road and Victoria Road, it's not safe for pedestrians. Um, a friend of mine lives behind Iceland, and I've often found myself walking to her place um, trying to cross the road, you've got people zigzagging in and out, they're trying to squeeze, squeeze the cars in, you've then got the lorries coming down for obviously to, to yeah. stock Iceland, and it, it seems to me that people just love to moan about it, rather than be sensible and park properly. They'd rather actually say, oh, I've tried to park down there the other day and there was a big lorry. Well, you're not even supposed to be parking down there, it's all double yellows. <laughs> I think uh, until we get the parking review done, and yeah. hopefully that will be done sooner rather than later, but I really think then, and I hate to criticise the police, but I think they have got to get out and start issuing yeah. tickets, because people pretty much know 
they're going to be hard put to get a ticket. I mean, I was, spoke to one of the policemen the other day, and he said, well, you'll do, I think, either 30 in a week or a month. Well, the amount of parking infringements in Billy's now, that's pretty minimal stuff. Mm -hmm. And you could go around the schools in the morning and, and you know, yes. have a field day. Um, the other thing as well was with the shared space scheme, parking in the, sh in the high street, you said it's the police that should be policing that. I mean, how frequently do they check the road? Because obviously it's three hours, isn't it, minimum parking for blue badge holders in there, isn't it? I don't know what it's it is. It's three hours. Yep. I mean, they, the, there are no parking bays as such, but blue badge holders are permitted to park in the loading bays, which yep. is what the, the black bits where they park are. Um, without putting my head in the viper's nest, I think some of the... For anybody who genuinely needs a blue badge, Okay, absolutely fine. But I think there are a lot of people who perhaps once needed one and no longer do need one, mm -hmm. don't need a badge. The other thing which doesn't seem to get much um, notice taken of it, if you, so I drive you for instance, you have a blue badge, I can park on the spaces in Hamilton Road, but you have to get out of the car and you have to walk about. It's no good me leaving you sitting in the car mm. because that is breaking the law. The disabled person has to get out and, you know, be seen. And the other one, of course, is that you're sitting at home making lunch, and um, I'll just nip to town and park so I've got your blue badge. Well, that is totally against mm. the spirit um, of blue badges. Because also, with with the parking, you said they're loading bays, yeah, but then yeah. I have actually seen people who are driving down there to unload, yeah. and unfortunately, it's full. They're all um, full, isn't it? And they, they do actually park, and I've seen it where there's one loading bay. Outside Holland and Barrow is the best example. You've got the loading bay here, and they've parked four cars along there, which is really only space for two, and then they've parked two diagonally. Yeah. You just so you've actually got all of that crammed in that area. You really, yeah. really <laughs> cannot. Well, they are pure loading bays. Well, so that because disabled blue badge holders are allowed to use loading bays to park, then they're always full of it. Mm. People say they're parking bays. They are most definitely not. The reason we cannot couldn't make it fully pedestrianised is because a lot of the shops have not got rear entrance. Exactly. And that's, that's what's, if you like, none of it. Shared space is the best solution we could get. Somebody said to my wife the other day, well, the reason there hasn't been an accident is because people are careful. Well, that to me is game, set, and match. Yes. That's, that's why we don't have accidents. And everybody should be careful. And everybody should respect, you know, car drivers should respect pedestrians and uh, vice versa. I have to say, most people I see give way on the, on the um, courtesy crossing. I was going uh, past one of the Tesco's the other night and a couple of cars stopped and a taxi just bowled straight through and I mm. thought if ever that's a blatant disregard of supposedly professional driving I thought that was absolutely disgraceful. Mm. And, uh, but, you, know, <laughs> you cannot legislate for poor drivers. No, you can't, unfortunately. That's the problem. I mean, it brings you on to signage again. Doreen briefly touched on signage. You do hear it in the high street. You're in the proper signs. It signage is accepted that the sign, the signs meet Department for Transport requirements legislation. However, um, the three county councils, as you know, we have locality money. We are funding some non-Department for tra Transport signs to make it clearer and more visible. Mm -hmm. And the signs will be brought down at the moment. You know, you you, you need to look up to see the sign. Yeah. which perhaps isn't the best way, but. Um, there haven't been any injury accidents within the area and I think in the two years before the work was done there were 17 injury accidents so as far as that goes it's working but although it hasn't got universal mm. popularity I accept that. Because Doreen had to clear up the matter of the two accidents that did occur yes. but they weren't actually in the shed space no. area well, one, were they? One was, one the, was the one that went through the shop window but I mean he was a gentleman of 82 he readily admitted that he'd hit the accelerator instead of the brake and he's given him his license. Mm. And, um, without being critical, I think, fairly so, like all coastal towns, there's got a lot of elderly people who mm. are driving who perhaps just did her about in Felixstowe, and perhaps she'll ask, ask the question, should I be driving there? Exactly. I know one or two people who've, um, who've had an accident and stopped driving, and then, I mean, it's a terrible way to stop driving, mm. but equally, it's better they accept it. But hopefully the accident doesn't involve injuries or or even well, worse, fingers yeah. crossed. So all in all, we've covered quite a lot of information. Now, um, when you watch back the repeat, because we do repeat this show mm -hmm. um, the following day, so it goes back, all the information of all the different places that we've talked about will be on there. Um, so if you want to like councillors, it's yeah. yourself, Nick and Graham. It's so they'll, all, they'll be all on yeah, there. Yeah, we're the 
So everything will be there. So if you want to get in touch with anybody as well, you're more than welcome to have people. Yeah. You, do, you don't mind people talking? No, no, not at all. My, talking? You can publish my email address quite right happily. <laughs> so I suppose I should wish everybody a happy Christmas. Well, well I don't know. You might be in before then, but you, can, case, in, you can in advance. I'll I, half wish everybody a happy Christmas. I don't do it until December. <laughs> I didn't expect you'd be kind enough or foolish enough to have me back. So. Anyway, it's been a pleasure, John. Thank, Thank you very you, much for coming in, and right. I hope it's cleared up some things for people well, in Phoenix. Don't we hope. We, we hope. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>